Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatiron Tuning Question of the Week. This week our question comes from JDM Motive one on YouTube who wants to know, what are some of the common causes of ring line failure? There's a lot of speculation and in, in stuff out there on the internet. Uh, most commonly, what, it, what is, I would say is ring lands hate the color blue, which is where it's really unfortunate that uh, the propensity of World Rally blue with, blue with Subarus, um, they, they uh, do not like strong language. And the worst one that gets most people is you can actually break ring lands by hoping you don't break them. So that's what got me. That that's what happens to a lot of us out there. Just you hope that you're not going to break them, and well, we all know what happens. There you go. Yeah. In all seriousness, ringland failure is it is there, there's a lot of fear out there about ringland fa failures, and, it, and the theory is that it happens very easily on stock pistons. So that is that is what. Uh, Everybody says that is the vulnerability of the stock piston, is, is the ring lands. Now, what is a ring land? Let's, let's define that first. So, there are three rings on a piston. There's two compression rings, those are the top two rings, and then the third ring is the oil control ring. And rings are a separate piece of metal that goes around the piston, and that's what actually goes out to the cylinder wall and creates the seal. So that's what actually is holding pressure um, and, and holding a tight seal when the engine is running. Um, in between these rings are pieces of metal in the piston basically to hold the rings in place. That's the ring land. So when people talk about having a ring land failure, it's that piece of metal of the piston that cracks or breaks so that it's not holding the compression rings in place any longer. And that's what ring land failure is. Now, the, the simple answer to this is actually that the, basically the, the co most common cause of ring land failure is is pre-detonation uh, pre uh, pre ignition detonation or a lean running condition that would lead to one of those two causes. So that's the most common cause. And then where it gets tricky is trying to figure out what caused the lean running condition. So a lot of people look for something like a forged piston upgrade. Is that going to survive detonation issues more than an OEM piston? A forged piston is definitely going to be more um, more able to stand up to that to that kind of an event, but you can still break ring lands on a forged piston, and you can still damage a forged piston, forged piston, especially if you have a ring lane failure. With with pre ignition and detonation, the problem is like detonation is the easy one, easiest one to picture because that is a spontaneous combustion of the air and fuel mixture, and so you have an ex um, an uncontrolled explosion in the cylinder which leads to a very rapid increase in cylinder pressure. That's what breaks, that's what can break the ring lines. Lean running conditions, I mean, it, it you know, it, it, things can get hot and, and pressures can, can increase in the cylinder and damage the pistons, certainly more easily with, with a factory cast piston. Um, but again, damage can occur with the forged piston too. And with the lean running condition specifically, you know, that's, that's some kind of running issue that you really would want to it would probably throw some kind of a check engine light and you want to diagnose it and fix it as quickly as possible because, yeah, it's, it's not going to be, it, it, it could damage any piston. It doesn't matter what the manufacturer is. So let's go one step further down here. What would cause detonation or a lean running condition? Pre-ignition is a harder one. So pre-ignition is basically, you would have a hot spot in a cylinder. So commonly, commonly this is one of the, the issues or, or points of concern with the hybrid swap. Because in a hybrid swap, you have a, a cylinder head that has a lot of overlap in the combustion chamber over the piston because the cylinder head is designed for a much smaller piston than uh, the 2.5 liter piston is. And so the theory is that you can have hot spots in, the, in that overhang. And so those hot spots, as that air fuel mixture is starting to be compressed by the piston, could be hot enough to ignite the air fuel mixture early. So you basically have an early frame, flame front starting to form before the spark plug ignites, which leads to reasonably higher pressures at top dead center which can cause damage. Detonation, um, the easy one there is, um, is, is lack of fuel, uh, and lack of cooling so that the, the cylinder temperatures get too high so that you're starting off at a very high temperature and as the, the piston is compressing the air fuel mixture it gets to that point of heat of combustion where it just spontaneously ignites. Overboosting with the turbo 
what could be a result of this or a factor of this as well. If you're if you're pushing the turbo too hard, or like let's say you have a boost control failure and the turbo just makes maximum boost pressure, when it, when a turbo is making boost pressure, there's a there's a bell curve for for its efficiency. Once you fall off that bell curve and its efficiency goes down, you, the turbo is making pressure because it's heating up the air significantly. So there again, you're putting in a much hotter intake charge. It, as the as the you're filling up the cylinder and is then as the piston comes up to compress it again, it gets too hot, spontaneous ignition, big a big uncontrolled bang, and then that's what causes the, the damage. So really like pre-ignition and detonation typically will be some kind of a fueling issue or an air fuel ratio issue that leads to hot cylinder temperatures, which leads to that kind of a that kind of a failure. So similar to just a lean running condition. Lean running condition, yeah, that too. Lean running condition, I would I would categorize more in some kind of a like you have a leak, like there, there's a vacuum leak in in the inlet track. There's some kind of a calibration issue with the mass airflow sensor, um, so that the ECU is not correctly calculating the amount of fuel that it needs to put in for the amount of air that's present in the in the cylinder. It's certainly related, but and, and and there's a lot of overlap there. But yeah, I would say that a lean running condition would be more some kind of a an intake air sensor issue or a calculation issue in the ECU where it just isn't putting in enough fuel. How would I go about avoiding a ringland failure? Most people would think of a forged piston as a solution. So I'm, you know, if the ringlands are a weak spot on the factory cast pistons, I'm going to put in a forged piston so it has a much stronger ringland, so that should avoid the failure. But what we're talking about as far as, far as all of the potential causes, well, those are actually to do with, you know, the engine, the running of the engine, the, the state of the engine as far as like are there leaks present or something like that and all of those can damage an engine with forged pistons versus cast so really the best way to avoid any issues with ringland failures is to make sure that you don't have any vacuum leaks uh, make sure that you're running a good quality fuel now this you would if you had if you're running a lower octane or there's some kind of issue with the octane of the fuel that you're running you know that can cause problems so running a good fuel, um, and then above all else, make sure you've got a good quality tune on your car so that so that it is running properly, um, that it's not tuned basically right to the ragged edge. Like if any if there's any small variance in like problem with fuel pressure or something like that, that you you'd be tipped over that scale so that you you might have a detonation issue or something like that. Um, running a fuel that is more detonation resistant, like E85. So this is this is one of the reasons why E85 is so popular in the Subaru community, because um, it it has a very high effective octane, so it's very resistant to detonation. Um, can take lots and lots of timing uh, before it will have any issues. Um, so that can certainly help. But then you need all the correct supporting mods to properly run E85. So um, yeah, just good fuel, maybe E85, good tune. And, and absolutely no vacuum leaks. Those are the best things you can do to make sure you don't have ring on failure, regardless of the pistons that you have in your engine. Well, thanks everybody for checking out the question of the week this week. Hopefully that was helpful. Remember, you can submit your questions in the comments below or on Instagram. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned with Flying Student.